Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. Oh man, I got up excited this morning. Uh, had a great, great first evening at the Healthy Church Conference last night. I know so many of you guys were praying. Some of you guys were there last night. And uh, what, what a great kickoff, what God is doing in and through uh, just our relationships for our volunteers, for our ministry leaders, for so many pastors and other ministry leaders there. It was a great, great evening. So I uh, woke up this morning at it again today. Uh, but before we do, each and every day, we do the same exact thing. We spend some time with God. We start our day with Him. Uh, not running a marathon, not sprinting every day, but just taking one step forward. And uh, we're continuing our study here in Leviticus. Uh, and uh, I'll be honest, I I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying Leviticus a lot more than, than I thought I was going to. Uh, part of that has to do with Pastor Paul doing a lot of the research for me and pulling together some, some great <laughs> commentary on it. So appreciate him. Uh, but today we're going to be in Leviticus chapter 19 and 20. Let me just read this first verse here because this sets up what this is about. It says this, The Lord also said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. All right. So he's like, I'm going to give you some instructions for holiness. Remember the big, the big thing that we keep coming back to is the idea of being unclean, clean, clean. Holy. Holy is set apart. Holy is is uh, typically up to this point, all the things we've been talking about, to, that state of holiness happens in the temple. It's the, the sacrifice. It's the anointing. It's the committing to the Lord. Uh, there's the behavior things and there's this. But, but now he's going to go through a bunch of things that we should do to be in this state of holiness. And, and that's our behaviors. There are certain behaviors that are aligned with God's values. Certain things that God says, when you do these things, you are being set apart. That you are operating differently than the rest of the world. You are operating with my values, uh, with my heart. Uh, your, your actions are setting you apart. Your actions are actually an act of worship. Now, a lot of times we don't think about our behavior as worship, but when we're following God's commands, that's showing Him honor. Uh, that's giving Him worship. And this next section here, goes through a list of things. We, we can't read through it all. I'm going to kind of highlight several of them here, um, but just shows that these, these acts, these behaviors are actually worship to God. So, so let me read along here. It says this. Uh, first thing, it says, each of you must show great respect to your mother and father. You must always observe the Sabbath day of rest. So these go to the, the Ten Commandments. These are things that uh, were, were pretty straightforward that they already knew about. It says, for I am the Lord your God. And this, this keeps repeating. I am the Lord your God. It's reminding that I am holy and I want you to be holy as well. I want you to be set apart. Worship me with your behavior. Uh, verse 4, do not put your trust in idols or make metal images of gods for yourself. Remember, once again, this is part of the Ten Commandments. And then it talks about peace offerings. And here's one of the things that, that comes up that, that's new. When you harvest your crop of your land, this is verse 9, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your field and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vine and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and for the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. That, that as they harvest, they're to leave, leave some edges, leave the, uh, the droppings for the poor. This is how they're going to part of kind of the, the system, the, the safety net in their culture for those who are struggling. And we see later on in scripture, Ruth, the, the Moabite, a woman who comes with her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to Bethlehem. And the way that they're surviving is through this act. Ruth goes out and she's gleaning in the field. She's picking up the leftovers. She's harvesting the edge, edges that have been left for the poor and unfortunate. And God gives them this, this instruction. He says, "This, do this and you're going to be set apart as holy. This, this act of leaving some behind is an act of worship. This is, by the way, in addition to the first fruits. So it's not like they're leaving the temple, they're, they're harvesting their crop, leaving some of it behind for the poor, and then what they harvest, they bring the first 10% to God as well. So this is over and above an act of worship. Uh, do not steal, do not cheat one another. Once again, these things that uh, are, are part of the Ten Commandments, he's reinforcing these things. Uh, do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. That, that's an interesting one, right? Uh, but just this idea of, of, of make sure that when the sun goes down, you've taken care of all your business. 
much different culture back then, much more uh, subsistence, uh, you know, day-to-day -day working, uh, but making sure that they don't take advantage of the people in their employment. Do not insult the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear the Lord, uh, fear your God, I am the Lord. So taking care of those who are, are hurting among us. Uh, do not twist justice and legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. Uh, do not stand by idle when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. So defend one another. Uh, all of these, these different uh, steps along here, uh, different things that, that God says you're going to act differently. You're going to show love and compassion. And when you do that, when you take care of your neighbor, when you stand up for what is right, that is an act of worship. You are setting yourself aside for, for, for holiness. That, that in those ways, you're modeling my heart and my attitude. This reminds me of 1 Corinthians 10.31. It says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So we look at this list and all those these, these specific things, and some of them aren't necessarily applicable today. Um, if you have a little garden in the backyard, you're not supposed to leave the, the extras there in case a homeless person comes by and can pick up the scraps. That, that's, that's not applicable today. Today. But the heart behind it. Are we, are we leaving some margin in our life for those who have need? Are we taking care of our neighbor? Are we, when we see them in need, when we see someone hurting, are we rushing to help or are we kind of doing hands off? That in all of these ways that we show love, that we show care, that we show compassion, that we model the heart of God is actually worship. Yeah, it's, it's service. It's ministry. It's all those things too. But ultimately, it's worship. It's setting apart this time, this energy, these resources as a commitment to God. Uh, once again, if you want to go through the, the whole chapter here, the whole two chapters here, there's lots of different things there. We just kind of want to give you a flavor for that this morning. And, and the big idea is it's attaching behavior to worship. Uh, that yes, there's the temple, uh, there's the sacrificial system, there's all these things, and they have to go to the temple to make the sacrifice, they have to go to the temple to make atonement, but each and every day, their behavior can be worship to God. And he gives them ways to do that from the simple 10 commandments that were kind of ingrained to additional things to show care and compassion. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up there for today. Let's uh, kick our day off together by, by praying together and uh, we'll get the day started. Lord, we love you. And we are so grateful for just uh, the time we get to, to start our day with you. Uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for just this reminder today that that whatever we do, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we should do it for your honor and glory. Uh, doing, uh, caring for one another is with the heart that you have for each and every one of us. Uh, looking for ways to serve, looking for ways to love. And, and God, we, we recognize that in, in some mysterious way, as, as, as Jesus said in Matthew 25, that when we take care of those, the least fortunate, that, 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 that we're actually doing that for you. Uh, this ultimate act of worship. So may our day be full of worship full of pointing people towards you through our behavior, through our attitudes, through our actions. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.